They went down in history for their great and terrible atrocities. Queens and noble honorable ladies at first glance, who turned out to be sadists and tyrants on closer examination. The Ex Libris channel is on the air, and today we will tell you about the bloodiest queens. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell so you don't miss new videos. What comes to your mind when it comes to queens? So many are in the shadow of their husbands for the rest of their lives, and even though they have had some accomplishments, they still go unrecognized. Few queens are remembered for truly great deeds. Sometimes they are terrible and bloodthirsty to the point of splendor. Do you still think that women are exceptionally gentle and sweet creatures? You bet your ass they are not. History is replete with facts about women who blindly believed in their ideas and blazed bloody trails. However, whether they were really so bloodthirsty or were puppets in the hands of the great cardinals for you to decide. One thing is certain. Women in anger can be insane and horrible at the same time, so don't piss them off. Mary Tudor I. Surely you've all heard of such a drink as the Bloody Mary, and perhaps you've even tried it. It contains tomato juice, which looks like blood. Why not Mr. Tomato or Count Dracula, for example? Yes, yes, the drink is named after the very same Mary Tudor. In people's eyes, she literally drank someone's blood for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was Mary Tudor I who was considered a symbol of the evil that was done to the country. A woman who never claimed the royal throne willed herself to get it. The queen was called a Catholic because all her upbringing and skills were limited to reading stories about saints. She had no proper skills at all for governing a country. She had loved falconry since childhood and feared men like fire. Apparently, her religious upbringing was so deeply rooted in her that any display of men was perceived as something sinful. One would hardly have thought at the time that such a silent woman would be the menace of all Protestant revolts, that it was with them that the bloody wars would be fought. Her first victim was a relative, Jane Grey, who was only 16 years old at the time. She justified this death by public duty, though she mourned the loss. But mourning was short-lived as Jane's husband and father-in-law followed her to the scaffold. After a while, a real religious feud broke out. The whole of England was ablaze, sending hundreds of priests who refused to accept Catholicism there. Rumor has it that she burned even those who, on their deathbeds, nevertheless agreed to embrace her faith. For these atrocities she went down in history as the Bloody Mary. Yet some historians now agree that Mary was only a puppet. Being incapable of governing the state, there were so-called great cardinals at court who skillfully took advantage of Mary's religiosity or did things behind her back. Countess Elizabeth Bathory. I wonder if there is a murder section in the Guinness Book of World Records. It turns out there is and Elizabeth Bathory is considered to be the most famous among the Hungarian serial killers. Although this is debatable because the exact number of victims was not reported. She killed peasant girls in rather sophisticated ways through torture by fire, beatings, mutilation of body parts, skinning of the face, torture with needles and much more. The Countess took great pleasure in doing so. She had about a hundred tortured and murdered girls to her credit. It is rumored that she took blood baths. Her castle truly seemed dark and mysterious. A seemingly decent noblewoman with the terrifying secrets of the dungeons of Chai Castle in the Kingdom of Hungary. The history of Elizabeth Bathory is shrouded in darkness to this day. Many have classified her family Bathory as a close relative of the infamous Count Dracula. In addition to mysticism, however, researchers believed that such mental abnormalities could be the result of multiple marriages within the family. Elizabeth was a very beautiful girl from childhood. Who knows, maybe it was in the bloodbaths was the secret of her youth. However, some researchers have studied the biography of the Countess referred to her fine education, but at the same time the promiscuity of the family. If you believe the diary of the young Elizabeth, she was a frequent witness to the mockery of the servants. In her diary, she described her impressions of what she saw, which may have been when her sadistic tendencies began to emerge. She married very young, but never had a happy family life. She was engaged at the age of 10 to Ferenc Natadashi, and they were married at 15. Immediately afterwards, her husband left for study for three years and then became a commander of the Hungarian troops in the war against the Turks. All the puzzles came together in this story. A sad childhood, her husband's lack of love, and the brutal death of her lover at the hands of her husband. 
He castrated him and handed him over to a pack of dogs. It would have been surprising if this woman, after all these ordeals, had been all right. In the end, she was walled up in her room, where she died. There was not a single ray of light in her cell, only a hole for food. The guards, on pain of death, did not speak to her for the rest of her life. What is surprising is the existence of three different versions of her capture. In view of this, many scholars are still debating whether all these atrocities were on her conscience or whether the evidence was fabricated. The trial took place the day after her indictment, and there are too many inconsistencies in the story itself. Isabella I of Castile It is thanks to her reign that we know Spain as it is. She was not prepared to rule the country, but fate arranged herself differently. At 18, she secretly married Ferdinand of Aragon, and five years later she ascended the throne of Castile and Leon after the death of her childless older brother Enrique IV. Isabella of Castile was an ardent Catholic and wanted peace for Spain. But her peace was rather harsh. She created a series of laws of polity that protected the rights of Spanish subjects. Together with her husband, they gave rise to the Spanish Inquisition, during which some 200,000 Jews and Arabs left the country. The rest were tortured and some 10,000 were sentenced to be burned. In the epical year of 1492, Isabella did the most important thing for the future of Spain. She led the Spanish kingdom to its final liberation from the Arab Caliphate, ending a reconquista that lasted seven centuries. Ranavalona I, Queen of Madagascar, destroyed all claimants to the throne after the death of her consort. During her reign, one-third or one-fifth of the country's population was exterminated according to various accounts. European missionaries were driven out and Christians were persecuted. Ranavalona I's policy was to preserve tradition, which led to the isolation of the country from the outside world and the severance of economic and political ties with European powers. Her husband, Radom I, opened Madagascar to foreigners, which greatly contributed to the development of literacy and Christianity in the country. A system of primary education was established and European cultural and technical skills were developed. Printers began to open, printing alphabets, dictionaries, collections of proverbs, fairy tales, and religious literature. But after his death, all this faded into oblivion. It all began with forced taxes, under which everyone other than slaves had to work for the state without pay. The use of such forced labor and cruel justice led to enormous deaths among soldiers and civilians. Europeans could be sold into slavery for their debts. During the trial, it forced people to take the poison tangent, the so-called trial by divine judgment. If the person survived, he was presumed innocent. The trial of guilty citizens was carried out with the help of two hands, representing the plaintiff and the defendant. When the crowds were large, the birds were given grinded pieces of the poisonous net tangent along with grain. The culprit was the one whose hen died first. Depending on how long the convulsions lasted, the witch doctors advised the monarch on the punishment. During the reign of Ranavalona, it was not the chickens that were put to the test, but the defendants themselves. Such a trial was used in numerous disputes, including theft, witchcraft, and confession of Christianity. In the 1820s, about 1,000 people a year died from such trials. Of the survivors, estimates range from 20 to 50 percent died. Ranavalona, I pursued an active policy of conquest. Those people who did not join her state and become slaves ended up starving to death due to the scorched earth policy. Military service under her rule was made equal to unpaid drudgery, which served to disorganize the army, although before her reign the army was built on the European model. So how do you like these bloody stories? In fact, history holds many mysteries and there are many more such kings and queens. Who are they? Crazy sick people or great politicians, you decide. And if you want to continue this topic, write necessarily in the comments and we will tell you about other bloody stories of court lords. This is Ex Libris with you. Please like, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell so you don't miss new videos.